What's going on guys? Welcome once again to Team Bodybuilding India. My name is Shreyas. So guys, this is the second episode of the Q&A with Shreyas. So you guys asked your questions on Facebook and I got all the answers for you. So guys, let us start off. The first question comes from Karthik Gilatar. He has two questions actually. His first question is, what do you have to say about the fitness lifestyle? And his second question is, who is your role model in bodybuilding or for fitness? So Karthik, the fitness lifestyle is absolutely was awesome. One of the main reasons for that personally is that my self-confidence is always high. In the past, when I didn't used to train and when I used to be a fat ass, my self-esteem and my self-confidence was very low. But once I started training, the self-esteem, yes, of course I look good, but the self-esteem and self-confidence, such things, what I think about myself, it really went high. So that is one of the things I like about fitness and my role models, I like almost everybody who were in the 70s and 80s, especially Arnold, uh, Frank Zane, Franco Colombo and even Lou Ferrigno. So these were some of my role models. In the current era, or I, I really like Ronnie Coleman and I also like Leela Prada. And out of YouTube, one of the guys who really motivated and well, inspired me to take up uh, and start my own fitness channel by the Hall Twins. And POG, that is Physics of Greatness, that is Chris Jones and Vince Glazer. So, what I like about those two channels is they are real, especially POG. Whatever he does, he doesn't do any fancy things. Whatever he, whatever he thinks, he says it, and whatever he feels and whatever he has experienced, he puts it up to you. So, that is why I like him. And my channel is, channel is also some, uh, somewhat like him because I also just I don't like to do fancy things, I don't like to put the backgrounds, I don't like anything. I just tell what, I just give you guys the information. So the next question comes from Onkar Kubal. Sorry, Onkar Kubal. This question is, how to maintain weight and muscle during fever or flu and when to hit the gym after the fever cures? So personally, I recommend that if your fever is not that high and you can have your food and you feel that your food is, di is digesting easily then that is the time when you can hit the gym but if you think that you can't get out of the bed then I highly recommend you stay from the gym for a few days and it's difficult to maintain your weight because there will be loss of water when you are not well so you might lose a lot of water weight so don't worry you won't lose much muscle when you are having fever so take rest there is bed rest if you are on bed and if you can't move then stay at home else if you can uh, get up and uh, you can run or you can walk easily then you can train doesn't matter if you lift uh, light weights but if you can you can go to the gym so next question comes from Ritesh Das so his question is how to how do I know my body fat percentage the online body fat calculator not uh, doesn't work properly and I don't have any fat calculating machine so please help thank you so my advice would be there are many clinics or uh, many hospitals here in India as I know a couple of hospitals here so they they have that instrument you is using which you can calculate your body fat uh, percentage but the problem with that is you have to check your body fat percentage from the same person if you check it from me then you have to check it from me the next time so you will get a perfect uh, perfect measure of your body fat percentage but personally i like to look in the mirror i will see changes in the mirror and if i see changes in the mirror it means that i'm losing fat and once i see the striations in my body it means that i am below 6 uh, sorry below 9% body fat so if you if you find it difficult to find a body fat calculator just look yourself in the mirror weekly and you will see some kind of changes. So next question comes from Shah. This question is, my wrist is proportionally small compared to others. I do forearms and wrist curls once a week. How to, how to get a gain in my wrist and forearms? So Shah, what you can do is, you can't do anything about your wrist. See, I can give you my own wrist. Look at those, my wrists. It is very small and it is not dense at all. 
so I am liable to injuries but it is completely genetic guys you get it from your dad or mom or someone but it is completely genetic some people will have dense bones that's why even though they are shredded and they don't have much muscle because of the bone weight or bone density their weight will be slightly higher personally my bone density is very less that's why I might look like I'm 70, 75 kilograms, but I just weigh 70 kilograms. So you can't do anything about the wrist, but for forearms you can do lots of wrist curls, that, that forearm curls, like for your forearms and you can do hammer curls, reverse grip, reverse grip curls for your forearm. Those are very good forearm builders. But whatever I do, my forearm doesn't seem to grow. My biceps seem to grow, my arms seem to grow, but my forearms look small as compared to my biceps. So next question comes from Aviraj Pardesi. This question is, I want to make aesthetics my profession, but I'm not sure if that will work because I don't want to be a big animal. I want to be aesthetically sculpted and want to do online business uh, somewhat like you are doing. I think I can do pretty good at that because according to my age, I'm extra aesthetically gifted. Any tips on how to start and what to do? to keep uh, what are the things to keep in mind so Aviraj Pardesi I don't care how aesthetic you are once you think you want to do it's not business what I'm doing I just train people and they pay me it is not called business it's my profession so it might be it might look like business but it's not business I train my clients I help them reach their goals and they pay me and they say if you're good at something don't do it for free so it's good to have such kind of profession or you look uh, you think like well, how I think but if you don't have the knowledge you will be a absolutely a big loser because there will be clients who will listen whatever you tell but there are clients who will ask why the question why if you tell them something they'll ask why so be sure that you are you have your uh, facts in mind then you can uh, start off your own uh, online training or something like that my thing is I try to gain as much knowledge as I can because I know that I, 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 I might be knowing only even 40% of uh, out of 100 uh, that is to know about fitness but out of that 40% I know I can get my clients ready but I'm learning every day so that I can reach a level where I can become maybe one of the best. So next question comes from Jasmeet Bakshi. This question is does empty stomach cardio burn more fat or does it burn muscle? So, Jasmeet Bakshi, there are people who say and also studies that says that empty, empty stomach cardio burns more fat than uh, non-fasted cardio. But uh, it depends on you. If you burn 400, the logic behind that is you will be fasting for around 8 hours which means that your body will be needing more amount of energy. Since there is no food in your stomach, where will you get the energy from? That is, you will get your fat to be converted into energy. That is the logic behind that. But personally, I, I like to do uh, cardio on empty stomach. I'll tell you why. When I, ha when I do it after my workout, I feel like shit. Because uh, I don't have a step mill or other good fancy machines in my gym for cardio. I just have a treadmill and I feel like shit when I walk on the treadmill. So I like to do empty stomach cardio and the reason I like to do empty stomach cardio is I feel good. If I have food in my stomach and it, it becomes very difficult for me and especially after my workout I'll be damn tired and it will be very difficult for me to do cardio. That's why I like to do cardio in the morning and sometimes when I can't do it in the morning I might wake up late so I'll be doing it after the workout. So that's it. And will it burn muscle? I'm not sure if you hit your macros that is if you want to get 2400 calories in a day and if you hit those 2400 calories in a day it you will lose muscle in a long term but it will be very minimal so and make sure that you get enough protein and next question comes from Abhishek Kumar his question is I have been out of the gym for two years I did train earlier for five months what should you what should be my uh, what should be my approach to work out now full body or something how many days should I train per week since you are out of the gym for two years you are back to the beginner status your body will not be do, will not be knowing what you are doing because of that you might see some good gains 
you will see some beginner gains. So I would like to suggest you either go for upper body, lower body split or uh, full body workout three to four times a week. That is what you can do because if you since just you are starting out, it is good that you do all compound movements like bench press, squats, deadlifts, bent over rows, dumbbell rows, uh, and some isolation exercises like curls for biceps and tricep push ups. So these are some of the things that you can do, and it will help you a lot, believe me. And that was one of the mistakes I made when I started working out. I did like chest, uh, lats, uh, shoulders, biceps, triceps, and legs six days a week. I thought I, I used to get good pump, but I never built muscle in the first year of my training. So first year of your training is very crucial. Make sure that you utilize it completely. <coughs> so guys, the next question comes from Charanjit Singh. His question is. Any tips for skinny guys to gain weight and which age is the most appropriate for taking protein shakes? So let me start off with your second question. So you ask what is the best age for taking protein shakes? I will recommend that you watch Mark Kobliner's channel. He feeds his young children who are 8 to 10 years old with protein shakes. It is absolutely safe guys. It is made from milk so you need not worry. Absolutely no reason to worry. So even if you're 10 years old or 15 years old or 20 years old or 60 years old, you can have whey protein shakes. But make sure that you are healthy. That's it. You don't have any uh, health issues. If so, then you can take it. I have heard many funny things that people tell about whey protein shakes. You lose your hair, you lose your kidneys, you lose your liver. I have heard many such things. So the other question is, any tips for skinny guys? Let me tell you one thing dude, you are skinny for a reason, you don't eat enough food. I am a person, my body type is such that if I eat around 200 calories more than my normal uh, maintenance calories, I will gain weight. But you might not be like that, you will need to have around maybe 600 or maybe 1000 calories more than what your body needs to maintain your weight. So make sure that you, enough, uh, you have enough food mostly based on and don't forget your fats many people forget their fats because but make sure that you have your fats because one fat gram of fat is equal to nine calories if you can't get fat eating so much food then go for a mass gaining supplement that will help you a lot and the next question comes from Mayur Prashar his question is bro I take whole skinless chicken instead of taking breast portions I want to know how to make it for bodybuilding without processing it more thanks in advance so I know where you're coming from even I used to have when I started working out so whole skinless chicken means with bone that is you won't be get you will be having breast but not the complete the chicken won't be completely of breast it will comprise of thighs legs wings everything so whatever you have whatever you can afford whatever you can get have it there will be a day in your life when you can afford chicken breast or when there you can find chicken breast. At that time have a chicken breast. But now since you are having whole chicken, make sure that you have it. Close your eyes, eat. You will gain all kinds of muscle. No need to worry. So next question comes from Nibin KM. This question is best way to reduce cellulite fat and what's your take on these home workout programs like P90X, Insanity and so on. So Nibin came, so cellulite fat, I don't care what type of fat it is, I don't care. As long as you are on a caloric deficit and you burn more calories than that, what you are taking in, you will lose all kinds of fat. It doesn't, it doesn't work out like this, like you want your belly fat to go first, your, the fat in your arms to go last. It doesn't work out like that, it is a bad, it is like, it's a bad luck for all the human beings that the you deposit your fat in your stomach first and it is the last place from where the fat will be burned. So you can't do much about that. Be at a caloric deficit and you will lose all kinds of fat. And his next question is, uh, what are my take on home workout programs like P90X, Insanity and so on. It is good for fat loss, but if you want to get big and build muscle, it won't be good enough for you. There will be a reason, uh, there will be a time when you will be gaining all kinds of muscle at the beginning. But after that 90 days, when, if, when you start over that program again, you won't find any gains. You'll go through a plateau. That's when you can go for weight training programs and that's when you can build all kinds of muscle. 
and next question comes from Shaiwal Sharma. His question is, what are some good sources of low glycemic index, glycemic index or glycemic index carbohydrates in Indian food apart from roti and chapati? You can also can you suggest some good vegetarian protein sources. For vegetarian protein sources, I recommend you go to my website www.teambodybuildingindia.com and as far as the Indian food sources uh, which, have, which are low in glycemic index, you can go for all kinds of veggies and veggies are uh, very low in carbs and good source of carbohydrates and you can go for things like oatmeal, brown rice and sweet potatoes and most of these are on the medium side and it won't uh, hurt you if you are trying to lose fat. One that might hurt you is some processed food so stay away from processed food and one thing I would like to tell you guys is that there is no such thing as Indian food for bodybuilding and American food for bodybuilding. Protein is protein. If you find chicken is protein in uh, you find chick uh, protein in chicken in India, you will find protein in chicken in USA. So there is no no such thing as protein uh, sources in India and protein sources in America or protein uh, diet in India and diet in America. Yes, the cultures are different, but you have to eat to build muscle, and you have to eat little less to burn fat. As simple as that. And next question comes from Siddharth Rajagopal. His question is, his question is, actually he has two questions. How has bodybuilding changed your life? And I mean from a personal point of view. From a personal point of view, it has absolutely changed my life and it has turned my life around. Especially, I never thought that I'll be sitting in front of the camera and having my own YouTube channel. I just went to my balcony and I was looking around and I, I, at a distance of around 100 meters I found a gym. I thought that what will I be doing sitting at home? That's when I started working out. In the first year of my training I was totally bullshit. I did nothing but just talk in the gym, uh, chat on my phone, nothing else. But once and one of the funny things that I did was I had man boobs. So I thought that if I train my chest more the man boobs, it will fat will be deposited in my chest. It might sound funny, but at the beginning I thought like that. That is why chest is one of my weak points. I am not giving an excuse, but it is a reason. So, bodybuilding has changed my life in a huge way, and you can see the difference because I have 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. I was told I was a totally useless person who is sitting at home, who used to sit at home, eat his chips, eat his French fries, and watch TV all day. It has changed my life, guys, and you can see the difference. I think. I get messages all the time telling that you have inspired me to work out and it feels good uh, when people tell like that and I am looking forward to making this my profession. I want to go into the fitness industry somehow, I don't know how but uh, like becoming a personal trainer and I have a dream that I can train some big guy like a famous person or a celebrity maybe one day but that is a long ahead but my main goal now is this YouTube channel and my personal training, online personal training. That's it. And next question comes from Nitin Sagar. His question is how to hit legs effectively? I mean, what is the strategy to get those tree trunk legs? The first thing I would like to tell you that go for higher reps. Legs are big muscles and make sure that you go higher reps for legs, not like 2 to 3 reps on leg press machines or hack squat machines. Go for higher reps like 12 to 15 reps or maybe even more than 15 reps. So that will help you. And stay away from, you You have to do such exercises like leg extensions and leg curls. But make sure that you do at least lunges, leg press, squats. One of them and hack squat, stiff legged deadlifts, seated hamstring curls and lying hamstring curls, such exercises. Make sure that you incorporate minimum 4 exercises for your legs. That is at least 3 for your quads and maybe even 2 for your hamstrings and try to work out your legs twice a week. I know it is difficult because legs take a long time to recover but at least every 5 days try to hit your legs and you will find all kinds of growth in your legs. And next question comes from Ashok Birada. His question is, in between my chest there is a difference. How to cover it? And I want to start my YouTube channel so please help me. So Mr. Ashok, Rather, if you are asking me what to do for the inner chest, I would like to tell you that there is not much you can do about the inner chest. There is no such exercise for inner chest. But what you can do is incorporate flies so that, so that you can shorten your pecs, pec muscles so that it looks like your inner chest is developed. Because when you do the most muscular 
when you pose, if you have that chest where you have that outer chest, very a good outer chest, but the inner chest is lacking, then it won't look good. I am a victim of that. My inner chest sucks, absolutely sucks. You can see the bone here, and most of the part is covered, but the little part over here it's not covered. So I'm trying my best to cover that portion as well. And next question comes from Sonak Sixteen. His question is. Can we build muscle on ketogenic diet? So, Sonak, I recommend you click the link right over here for the ketogenic diet video. I made a video on that. It is a very popular video on my channel. So, do check out it here. So, the next question comes from Azar Almaker. His question is, how does testosterone supplement work? So, Azar Al Azar Almen Almaker. Let me tell you one thing, I have never tried such supplements like testosterone. If you are talking about steroids, then you are at the wrong place, but you are asking about uh, testosterone booster supplements, then you look like a pretty young person. So, you won't need that because at the age of 18 to 28 or maybe 30, your testosterone levels will be quite good and quite high for building muscle. But once you get older, around 25 to 50, that's when you might <coughs> want to go for testosterone supplements. 